Uh, Damien Ferry here, live from the Unshackled, and um, just before we head off to the Stalwart Bastion 2017 event over at the Cathedral in Sydney, we've got a um, special guest, an interview from Charles Knox, and uh, tell us a bit about you, yourself Charles. Thank you, it's a pleasure to meet you, yeah. and a pleasure to see you all in a manner of speaking. Um, I came to the Conservative Movement oh, three, four years ago, and... One of the reasons why that's the case is because I promised myself many years ago that I wouldn't be a bystander. And there's, there's so much that I see going wrong with what's happening today. And a lot of it, I think, is connected to the, uh, let's call it, the, uh, the creeping left that, that we see in so much of our society. Mm. And this is one event that uh, is going ahead, partly to try and uh, stand as a counterweight to the effects that the uh, very aggressive social agenda of the left has. Which doesn't mean say an awful lot about myself, but it's nevertheless relevant to my motivations, I think. Yeah. No worries. And um, so um, I, I guess um, that was the main reason why you um, were driven to create this event in the first place, as a um, to to show that there is another voice out there in the community that isn't um, very very much uh, given that opportunity to be heard. That's very true. Um, in increasing years, <laughs> increasing degree rather, in recent years, the the left and the homosexual lobby has been very aggressive in promoting pro-homosexual causes and it's one thing to um, have a, a sexual dysfunction which is what I would assert homosexuality is as it prevents um, biology from doing what it's supposed to do uh, it's one thing that, that is the case that's their business but the, the promotion and normalisation of this I, I feel is um, is a strong negative towards society mm -hmm. and the, the ramifications of much of this sort of stuff we do see panning out, and it's become so that even the, the faintest voice raised against that trend is shouted down as if it was a matter of hatred or a matter of, um, of intense dislike, and I think I can safely say that the vast majority of people who are socially conservative don't hate people who are homosexual. We just don't like it to have the, the whole concept forced down our throats. Mm, mm, that's right. And um, how did the event go in the past years that you've done it? There has been some opposition. The, the event was created um, because there have been vandalism attempts on the cathedral. Mm. There have been um, hostilities. I use the phrase loosely. Um, no one's been roughed up yet. Although there have been some um, fairly heated exchanges. Um, but there, yeah, there have been some vandalism attempts on the cathedral. The, the Catholic Church as an institution is very iconic of much of Australia and Western culture's mm. heritage and those who see themselves as progressive want to uh, eliminate a lot of what we consider to be parts of our cultural heritage mm. and because of that the Catholic Church is an obvious target and being so close to Mardi Gras um, emotions are uh, running higher um, there seems to be um, in some circles the perception of a social license to engage in acts directed against those that um, advocate traditional uh, views of marriage. That's and right. Yeah. Because of that, there has been some degree of necessity to prevent vandalism of the cathedral. Um, the, the cathedral uh, property managers have asserted in the past that they're quite content with their own security, which is laughable. <laughs> <laughs> three, three blokes wandering around um, slowly <laughs> throughout the whole night um, is just is absurd. Yeah, um, that's right. But that's, that's why we're there, um, yeah. in, in some numbers, to ensure that uh, the vandalism doesn't, doesn't go ahead. No, that's a, that's a, a great, great plan, that's, that's for sure. I mean, um, what, what, do you, what kind of concerns um, do you specifically have with the Mardi Gras in general as an event? <laughs> it's, it's almost a case of what good comes of this. Mm -hmm. um, if I was feeling poetic, I'd say it was a festival of debauchery rather than the celebration of any particular sexual inclination. It's just people scantily clad walking down the street, um, engaging in acts of, um, of you know, gratuitous sexuality. What, why would, don't we have you know, laws regarding indecent exposure and so on? I'm sure we do. I'm sure we do. Mm, and exactly, and yeah. if they were applied according to the letter of the law, the, some of these lewd acts would very definitely fall well outside the bounds of those legal provisions. Um, but because of the... Um, of the ways in which um, our discourse is policed, we find that we're not able to enforce those laws. If there was a, 
and a similar march celebrating heterosexuality in this day and age, all the participants would be arrested, not for hate crime, although they'd probably try that anyway, mm -hmm. but for a decent exposure because you're walking around you know, wearing nothing but a G-street in public. That's right. So funnily enough, that's illegal. Mm -hmm. um, and that and the being promoted as if it were a wonderful thing in and of itself. You know, your sexuality is your business, but I don't want to see it. Mm -hmm. I don't want it promoted in front of the media as if it was an excellent thing to display to the world. No, it's not. It's your business behind, you know, more or less behind closed doors. And don't bring your kids out to watch. That's what? right. Mm. We, talk, we talk often, and rightly so, about how the sexualization of, of our youngsters is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And yet, there seems an odd double standard where in the media, it's okay to sexualize our offspring if it's in favor of a homosexual agenda. Mm -hmm. To me, that is a baffling um, illustration of cognitive dissonance. How do you get the two points together and have a cohesive worldview? I don't think you can. No, I, I totally agree. I mean, it's um, it seems to me that um, depending on the situation, there is um, a, a different kind of bias attached to it. And um, I think um, what maybe was once um, an, an adult event has definitely uh, broadened um, to include children, uh, which is quite scary. And, um, I mean, for many reasons, obviously, it does... Um, uh, brainwash them with an agenda um, when they're too young to understand it or um, to even know what it is and um, and to know better and um, just takes advantage of them um, basically of their innocence and um, to put them into a situation where they, they definitely shouldn't play a part in um, I mean I uh, personally um, have spoken to even um, some gay people that tend to be um, libertarian um, I wouldn't even call them gay, I'd call them same-sex attracted, actually. That's a term I, I rather use. Um, but, I mean, um, even these people here um, have um, called the Mardi Gras pure filth. Um, you know, it's not not very common that there are many out there that do so, but um, the, the few that I've spoken to um, actually aren't, aren't for it at all and, um, and would like to see a ban on it or... Um, even another suggestion that um, they made was um, instead of doing it on public streets to perhaps uh, move it into a um, like a stadium and have it as an 18 plus event and that way um, it isn't subjected to, um, to children and uh, people on the streets which would be a lot better if um, um, if not banned that it was um, at least uh, a compromise situation um, but um, there are many things that can be done but um, that, that's just a few examples of um, that people have raised with me and um, it, funny enough there were a couple of people that um, uh, same sex attracted and actually um, see it for what it is that, that it is an agenda and, um, and it doesn't really um, uh, benefit the community it just paints them um, as um, a really perverted kind of community and, um, and not the, 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 the norm which they are trying to promote it as. Um, so they're, they're really digging themselves a hole in a way. It is an interesting dichotomy. Mm. The, the idea I would, um, I would tender mm. is that the, um, the festival atmosphere that they are trying to generate um, can be seen as an attempt to promote um, positive, you know, happy thoughts which they can then try and Life and mental game, mm -hmm. uh, which doesn't mean I think it's a good idea. Far from it, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that I think is where they, where they come from. Although I agree, if you're trying to say that same-sex attraction is just another form of, of sexuality, mm -hmm. um, which I don't think it is, because everyone has their particular preferences. But this this set of um, of preferences, in fact, renders your chances of successful reproduction. Um, dramatically reduced mm. ergo you know, is a sexual dysfunction and sexual dysfunctions tend to cluster as it happens yeah. and there are a number of sexual dysfunctions which we consider very damaging socially um, which also cluster around uh, around homosexuality mm. in its capacity as a sexual dysfunction yeah. and um, promotion of this as a as a great thing is a little bit dangerous in that regard as well definitely I um, mean um, at, at the very least um, I mean to it really should be an event that, that doesn't occur at all. I mean, definitely um, is pure filth, um, as many have described it as. And, um, I mean, the only other argument, like I had suggested, um, that people could make is that if it was in a, um, a, um, 
if it was held in a, uh, a privately owned um, place rather than a public place, then it's it's very hard to uh, prevent something like that occurring. But um, when it's um, in public, it, um, it's not only given the green light, but it's, it's basically um, encouraged and promoted. Um, and, I mean, the government has, has the, the power to stop such an event and, and for, the, for them to just turn a blind eye, and even in many cases now support it, um, well, it's quite disgraceful. Not all that long ago you had the police breaking it up, mm. and now the police march with it. Yeah. And I find the... The refusal to apply the law when there is such an obvious case of a really you know, clear law being broken, I find it very disingenuous. And um, we've also seen, um, obviously, uh, many businesses uh, come on the LGBT A to Z <laughs> bandwagon, um, and they feel like they need to uh, put their uh, support of the the community out there for them. Um, I've actually um, not not many too many days ago. Um, I learned that uh, Sydney FC, uh, the, the football team, um, actually uh, they're going to be wearing uh, rainbow shoelaces uh, in support. Uh, now, I mean, um, how many people at that game um, don't know about this? And then also, uh, what about if a player was to, to reject such a, uh, a thing on moral grounds? I mean, imagine the, the coverage that he would get. So, I mean, it's... To see all these businesses really um, play this game and um, to come out in support of this, I mean, it's um, it, it really is disgraceful. And I mean, just imagine if um, if anyone was seen to uh, support a um, a Christian group or uh, a Christian cause, it just wouldn't happen, would it? I mean, it's just they, they, they would obviously be assumed they were a, a wicked, evil, racist bigot mm. who hates everyone. Definitely labelled a, uh, a hate group, <laughs> nevertheless. Um, I mean, how important is it that we have the opportunity to voice our freedom of speech um, to such um, an event? And, I mean, it's obviously something that uh, um, affects everybody. I mean, they, they like to, to think that um, basically it's one of those, uh, well, if it's got nothing to do with you. Um, if you if you uh, don't like it, don't watch it. But it, it definitely, ha um, since being in public and... and uh, and being promoted, it definitely does affect everybody. And, um, I mean, how important is, is being able to um, voice our speech, and um, especially when you have a lot of people in the media and everything against us. I mean, um, what do you think about that? It's always good to, to have the right to express your opinion in general. Um, Voltaire you know, famously sp uh, spoke, so actually it wasn't Voltaire, but it's attributed to Voltaire in, in general parlance. He said, I will um, disagree with what you say, but defend to the yeah. death your right to say it. That's right. Yeah. But that, has, that is definitely no longer the case now. <laughs> there are many provisions against freedom of speech, and um, as it so happens, this particular event isn't actually saying anything per se. <laughs> um, Sour Bastion 2017 is, is really just making sure that the cathedral is not vandalised <laughs> on, on Mardi Gras night. Mm -hmm. There's no explicit statement um, by the event in any way, shape, or form. Um, it is just an interesting cu um, you know, curiosity, coincidence, if you will, that on Mardi Gras night, the cathedral has been subject to, to several um, cases of attempted vandalism for the last few years, mm. by coincidence. Right. Um, so by coincidence, there will be a number of people that will be there to make sure it doesn't happen. Um, freedom of speech is an important part of not just how we see ourselves, but how our perception of freedom exists. But it's one we also take very much for granted because it's been in place within this country at least for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And we've had a, a creeping erosion of it for a while now. And, and you're starting to see things like people being censured for expressing views that are really fairly commonly held. A lot of people are very uncomfortable with uh, the promulgation of pro-homosexual ideas. And this is part of the reason why there's a, a push against the plebiscite now. Mm -hmm. um, ten years ago, the push was for a plebiscite to enable homosexual marriage. But now that they are, um, I use they loosely, now that those who promote homosexual marriage are increasingly uncertain about the outcome, hmm. there is now, in fact, a push in the other direction to disallow plebiscite. Hmm. Um, but we digress a little bit. Well, well that, that's, <laughs> that, that's the thing. It's uh, very ironic when they say they have the numbers, but um, then they don't want to put it to the people because they know they're going to lose. <laughs> I mean, the, the silent majority is definitely against um, any changes. I mean, that, that there's no question about it. Um, that uh, um, Only thinking that um, 
elements in the inner city um, is somehow representative of the whole country um, is, is quite funny um, and, you know, just laughable, I mean. Um, and, yeah, like I said, I mean, if they really were serious about doing it, bring it to a vote and um, we'd be happy to see the result at the end of it because it's not the result they're going to want. And they know, just like the Republic debate, that once uh, it gets defeated at um, a plebiscite or referendum, that you're not going to um, be able to raise it for another 20, 30 years. So um, they know the consequences of it, and that's why they're really uh, trying to do whatever they can to, to sneak and, and swerve around it, basically, and, um, and, and somehow get it in. But um, with opposition to it, I mean, we're always going to be here fighting it. Um, what, what concerns do you have, especially um, with educational programs, um, which is even a step worse when it comes to safe schools, um, respectful relationships, building belonging? Um, there's free courses in Victoria that um, each uh, teach different things. Um, safe schools um, basically um, telling us that um, it's an anti-bullying program, but it's, um, is nothing like that at all. And um, basically, it's a... Um, it's, um, teaching kids, um, well, not, basic, but basically if you were a parent and, and, and your kid went and, and learned this stuff and, and came home and told you, you'd be quite shocked to, to learn what, what was actually involved in it, and um, I mean, um, they're, they're told, um, for instance, um, about uh, all kinds of uh, websites to, to visit, um, um, if you haven't looked at the contents of the, of the Safe Schools program, which many of you probably haven't. I strongly recommend you do it. It, is, it will be, if this, is, if this is news to you, then you'll be shocked yeah. and aghast at what is going on in that program. Yeah. And in Victoria, it's compulsory. In New South Wales, it's, um, there's still some ways you can work around it, but there's certainly strong pressure in that direction. Yeah. And in answer to your question, I think that the, the last thing our society needs right, right now is our offspring further questioning their own uh, identity their own place in, in the universe, their own place in an increasingly complicated world. Australia has one of the highest suicide rates in the world. Mm. Um, it's not Ethiopia, it's not Sudan, it's not Nigeria, it's not Afghanistan or the poverty stricken parts of Peru. It's, it's here, it's in the West. Yep. And part of that is because our sense of identity, our sense of culture, of belonging, of, of community, of what's right and wrong, has been so undermined by this and related movements that our, our offspring are left up the boat, up the creek without a paddle. Um, yeah, that, that's exactly right. Without a boat, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I mean, um, I was just going to actually um, raise. Um, I mean, obviously, the Safe Schools program has a lot of issues um, there, where it's promoting um, uh, a really bizarre and uh, perverted sexual education um, uh, form to our children. But uh, then you've also got other programs that, um, that that wasn't enough for the premier. I mean, he needed more. That wasn't enough. So um, you had to bring a respectful relationships uh, uh, program in, and that was another program that taught about um, uh, male privilege, that uh, we were somehow privileged because of our gender, our race, um, more than anybody else, even though it's minorities that get handouts, but uh, we were somehow privileged in the world. And, um, and basically also um, taught that, um, uh, well, not in direct terms, but in direct terms, that uh, men were uh, responsible for domestic violence and basically, we, you know, we were just evil and, you know, really bad people that, um, you know, came home and beat our wives up. Um, <laughs> you know, this, this is crazy. This, this is what the program teaches young kids, you know. Then there was the Building Belonging uh, program that was also introduced by Daniel Andrews in Victoria, and um, I mean that that went on the same sort of mark on the on the um, the issue of um, some sort of privilege, but um, was based on diversity and embracing uh, different cultures. And I mean, the, the one thing that people are forgetting is that the, the more we embrace in different cultures, we're losing our own culture here. I mean, um, we're, we're basically destroying Western civilization just to cater for everybody else. Um, in a little minority group. Um, so, I mean, with these three programs in place, and like you said, uh, Victoria definitely has it in place and doesn't seem like it's going anywhere um, anytime soon, but um, New South Wales has followed suit, and this is from the Liberal Party. I mean, the Liberal Party is supposed to stand up for conservatism, um, yet um, they aren't fighting it. I mean, um, it's us on the, on the outer that, that are the so-called extremists, that um, have to basically go out there and fight this. Um, it's, it's quite bizarre. The Liberals are standing up very well for economic conservatism, not so well for social conservatism. Mm. 
that, that's right. I mean, e- economically or whatever, um, they, they 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 tend to do fine when they're uh, when they're um, beating the chest of the of the the, the big corporate um, uh, big businessman. But um, they're they're definitely not representing families. Um, that, that's for sure. So they definitely um, don't have the, the priorities in the right spot. Um, now, um, what? do you think needs to change in society in general and, and how do people like us um, go about doing so? Partly by speaking. Mm. Not, not necessarily to anyone in particular, but to as many people as you can. Um, con- converse with people in your own social groups. Um, reason with them as to why you think what you think. Mm. Um, don't be afraid of who you are and, and why you are what you are. If you're a Christian... Tell them about your Christian views and how that underpins how you view the world. Mm-hmm. Don't be ashamed of that. There's nothing to be ashamed of. If you are a social conservative, um, know why you are. Know the reasons which make you think the way you do, and then don't be afraid to talk to people about that. You can be pl- polite and respectful, but don't be afraid to disagree. And the more you do that, the more people that will agree with you will feel emboldened to do the same. Mm-hmm. And it's not the kind of thing which happens instantaneously. It's not always an easy thing to do. It does become easier with practice. And keep talking. And engage with folks around you. And watch what's going on. Be critical of what you read or, or see in the media because we all know what the media is like. And I guess don't necessarily accept everything as if it were gospel. Um, the, uh, the faculties we are given for critical thinking are very important. Um, run everything you get through a common sense test. And if it sticks, then there's probably something fishy going off. Hmm. Well, that's right. I mean, uh, it's time for the silent majority to start being more vocal um, because for too long they've been silent and um, while they've been silent, um, uh, other people have taken advantage of that and, um, of course, um, brought in radical agenda uh, in the mix. And um, even though a lot of people um, are against it, it seems um, in, in many cases that people think that they're helpless and they can't actually uh, do anything Oh. Um, there's nothing you can do about this, you know. I, I hear it all the time, you know. Oh, I'm against it, but what are we going to do? Well, you could do a lot, you know, because if they could do a lot in bringing it in, then we can do a lot in resisting and also taking it out. Um, I mean, th- that's how it works, you know. If one group is more passionate, more uh, vocal about things, then they're going to get their way. And um, us, on the other hand, have to uh, be on the other end of the sword and... Um, that that's not where we want to be. So uh, I mean, do it for your children. I mean, if you don't, if if, if you if you you know you think oh what am, what's in it for me you know or oh I can't be bothered or you know too lazy, do it for your kids um, because that's the world they're going to be living in. I mean, you might be you know an older person and say oh well you know I mean times have changed, but what about the world that they're going to be brought up in? What about uh, the experiences? Because I know for one that. Um, uh, when they end up um, growing up in school and um, that this all of a sudden becomes the norm and then having some sort of moral fabric in, um, in your body um, is um, instead uh, put down and... Um, and the new heresy. And, the, the, yes, exactly right. Well, I mean, I actually... Um, I was speaking to Charles and, and also another man, uh, Elias, um, about this um, and... We were, it was a bit of a joke that we were making, but um, we were basically saying that these days has changed so much that um, instead of um, people um, such as the, the degenerates um, going down um, underground doing their things in private, we're going to be having to do that because anyone that's um, you know in the foreseeable future, if things don't change, then you know churches are going to be pro- probably banned. Um, because freedom of speech is obviously going to be outright. Out, out I mean, they're already saying that um, even if um, gay marriage comes in, that um, they're not going to give any um, exceptions for church people. I mean, I mean, there is a few people saying, oh, no, no, it's all right, we won't do that, but they will. They will in due time, because this is what happens when you're progressive. Mm. When you're progressive, there's no end. There's progress, continues on and on. So... It's not, oh yeah, we're satisfied with that and that's it. We won't do any more. No, it doesn't work that way. Didn't you know? Didn't Mao call it perpetual revolution or some such? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I mean, th- this is the thing. I mean, to, to be progressive, you are continuing wanting to change. You're wanting to change things and pushing boundaries, pushing norms. 
and soon we're going to be having to go to church underneath the ground where no one can see us because it's going to be most likely outlawed and um, going to be called like a heresy. I mean, this is how bizarre, and this has only happened in the last 50 years. Two generations, and it's 360. I mean, two generations, 50 years, for something like this to have happened. And I mean, not only that, all you have to do is look overseas and see the countries that have brought in gay marriages. What have they brought in next? What have they brought in next? They've brought in other stuff, haven't they? They've brought in polygamy in some places. They've brought in um, uh, uh, pedophilia. They've gone soft on. So um, that, that's becoming more of a social norm. Um, even some countries in Northern Europe, uh, bestiality is uh, something of a norm now. So, I mean, this is the problem. There is no stopping. There, there is, uh, unless, until they, they go to an ultimate utopia of Sodom, there, there is no stopping them. There's always going to be more and more out of what they call diversity, acceptance, love, harmony, all these peace, you know, all these words they use, um, you know, to accept things that shouldn't be accepted. And, I mean, just to mention safe schools, who were the people that were actually behind the safe schools um, program? You had Ros Ward, which was um, some sort of transgendered um, person, that um, said that they're not going to be um, um, quitting or um, this fight that they're, they're doing until the red flag is flown over the Melbourne um, Parliament House. Not far off. You know, not far off. I mean, they've got the right man in charge. And not only that, um, Gary Dowsett, um, uh, an academic, you know, um, person that um, taught at unis that was, uh, you know, around many students uh, preaching, he was actually somebody that said that the LGBT movement is going to be a movement or that he wishes it would be a movement that um, basically um, evolved to then accept pedophilia as a, as, a, um, as a part of the LGBT movement. So um, that wouldn't be considered a crime anymore but just a, uh, a sexuality. And there is groups on Facebook, by the way, that, they're, um, um, that are promoting this and they're, they're saying that pedophilia or being attracted to children is a, uh, a sexuality that... Um, that um, shouldn't be discriminated against. And no matter if you report the group, I mean, Zuckerberg isn't going to be, you know, deleting that. You know, he'll go deleting Christian groups or, you know, um, groups that are, you know, anti-immigration or something, you know, controversial. There have been speeches in British Parliament making very similar points, yeah. which, which I find abominable. Mm. But nevertheless, that, that is actually rhetoric from um, political establishments, from media, which is very close to mainstream. So you may think this is scaremongering. And while we're certainly the canary in the coal mine, this is not as far away as I wish it were. Mm -hmm. um, if you haven't read it before, look up intersectionality as a concept. It will be another one of those things which really um, sticks in your crawl. This is the kind of ideology that is being promoted in the West as if it were normal and acceptable and interchangeable with the traditional um, modus operandi we have for, for society. So there's a lot that's going on that's extremely damaging. The education system is, is a very strong part of that. Mm. And unless we start making our concerns you know, a bit, bit more clear, we're going to keep doing what we're doing and keep getting what we're getting, mm. which is not going in a direction that most of us watching this would, would think is a good one. Uh, I strongly urge as many of you as possible to interact with as many people as possible about the things which are concerning you in this day and age, uh, particularly with regards to uh, social shift, to the collapse of, uh, of traditional gender roles and identity um, and all that goes alongside that because you'll find there's a lot more people that, that actually agree with you than you may have thought. Mm. We are portrayed in the media as if we were a minority. We're mm. not, but we're just the ones that don't normally talk much because mm. that's the nature of conservatives. Right. So please, please take this opportunity to speak to those around you. You can be as delicate or as blunt as you like, but please don't, of all things, be silent. Mm. That's right. I mean... Um, People tend to think that the media are representative of the, the general population, and that's a lie. It's it's just um, it, not the case because um, what they um, what they um, how can I say represent are a really small uh, minority community that live in the inner cities. I mean, if you were to go out in regional rural areas, even if you were to go out in suburbia, suburbia doesn't agree with this stuff. I mean, this is how extreme it is. And um, when you have uh, people in the city implementing things like this um, that then aren't representative of uh, people in the whole 
rest of the state. I mean, it's quite scary, and it just shows how much control people in certain high areas in the city have. Um, it's a very much corrupt kind of situation, and um, like like we said, I mean, this is only a start, and they're going to continue on. I mean, all you have to do is look at it this way. Um, something like um, gay marriage, for instance, that would have been, you know, unthinkable ten years ago. Now, all of a sudden, it's, you know, something that must be done. Now, um, at the moment, you know, it's unthinkable, you know, to think that um, it, it, it's right or, um, or that it's just a um, sexual orientation to be attracted to children. What about in ten years' time? It could change, see? So make sure that you, you see what's going on and, and think because there's a lot of people that might be even, oh, you know, gays getting married aren't a big deal for me, you know, but think more outside the box because if you allow one thing to go, then everything else follows it. You might be even for it or might think, oh, yeah, you know, it's not a big deal. Okay, rightfully so, but then what about everything else that comes after that? Because as soon as you give green light to one thing, they're going to continue pushing these people aren't there to say, oh yeah, we just want this and we're going to be happy and we're going to be, you know, no, it doesn't work. They've got utopia in their head and utopia ain't until everything is chaotic, 180 degree, just a massive shift. Like society has to be, you know, damaged. The family has to not exist anymore, what, what's considered a norm or nuclear family. Um, th th that's what they've got in mind. So, um, Allowing little bits and pieces coming through, sneaking in. Um, don't ever think that you are, you know, that you're, you're compromising with them. You don't need, you shouldn't be compromising because they're going to take advantage. They'll never compromise on you. They'll never compromise with you on your values. So don't ever do that to them. And politicians are falling in the trap. They're thinking, oh, if I give them this, they'll leave us alone. No, they're not. They're going to come back in another six months or a year, and they're going to want something else. And it's going to continually be go downhill and. That, that, that's how it is, you know. I mean, um, uh, it'll never stop. I think it doesn't happen. Look at the uh, onward march of gun control in America or the onward march of the anti smoking campaigns. Not that I'm necessarily for or against those points, just, just to make the point. But people with a, with a particularly um, firm ideological bent will ask for a certain amount. And if they get half of it, they're happy. Because six months down the track, you ask for it again. That's and right. you get half of that. And they will keep. Keep pushing their agenda further and further, and that's exactly what we're seeing in this regard. That, that's how politics works, people. I mean, um, you ask for a little bit, then a little bit later, you ask for a little bit more, and then eventually you get what you want. And um, let's just say it this way: um, these kind of people might only have um, ten percent of what they want. I mean, th th there's a lot more down the track that they want, and they haven't got it yet. And they're going nice and slow, but you know, fifty years. I mean, that's all it's taken to get to to this stage, so I mean the people that first pushed it are still alive, so I mean you know, you don't you, you don't think that they're going to be, you know, all of a sudden satisfied they're, they're not satisfied until they get everything, and um, it takes time, but slowly, slowly when people become more accepting of it generations, generations start to lose a little bit more a little bit more, and then it's going to be the norm, it's going to be the norm with our kids, or their kids, you know I mean, definitely will be um what, what are you trying to achieve um, as, a, as a final sort of question um, um, today with the, um, with the events? Like, um, what do you hope to get out of it? We've got two primary objectives. The first is to prevent damage to the cathedral and anyone in it. Mm. That's, that's, right. that's, the, that's the reason we're here mm. in, the, in the immediate sense. Um, it has been the target of attacks before, and we expect it will be again. Maybe a bit, a bit less so. This, this year because of the, of the rain. The Lord's seen fit to provide us with mm. some rain. Mm. Um, that's the short term. In the longer term, conservatives of all stripes, I'm sure will agree that regardless of one's stance on gay marriage or many other issues, the vandalism of the cathedral is not a, not a good thing. And therefore we expect to draw people who are engaged in, in politics to this particular event and provide a networking tool for people that are interested in, in social matters mm. um, in that regard I think they're being very well served we've got a good turnout this year so um, in answer to your question I think that's the the two major points for, mm. for Starbuck Bastion 2017 yeah I mean um, it, it's a great event and I urge a lot of people to come out um, in the following years um, 
I mean, it's um, it, it's we're definitely not going to be getting any media coverage unless one of us, you know, um, accidentally bashes uh, someone of the opposing side. Then we're going to get plenty of media coverage. Don't worry about that. But um, you know, if anything happens to one of us, you're not going to hear about it. So <laughs> but that's how it works, you know. I mean, or or you will hear about it, but um, we're going to be the one that provoked them first. You know, by, by saying a you know a, a comment of some sort. By um, standing the <laughs> the cathedral, we will in fact be triggering someone. I'm sure. That, that's that's exactly that's how it works. The um, Mardi Gras will probably be happening next year. I'm hazarding a guess. And when it does, we'll be there again. Mm-hmm. And when it's there the year after, we'll be, we'll be there again. Mm-hmm. And the reason is, every time it's going to happen, there will be another attempt on the cathedral, and we're not going to let it happen. Mm-hmm. So we'll be there. And if you see this, and if the idea of of being there with us appeals to you, then come down. We'd be delighted to have you. Don't be afraid. I mean, um, don't think that... Um, don't, don't have these views um, tucked away and think, oh, you know, life's going to be a lot more harder for me now to have this. I mean, I know a lot of people that are in particular jobs um, and they're quite afraid to even raise these kind of views or be supportive of, um, of things like this or... Um, or, or speak out against, um, you know, degenerate kind of activities. Um, I mean, be who you are, because um, if anybody, um, whether it's to do with work, to do with friends, doesn't accept you for who you are and your values, then the, you shouldn't have any association with them, because, I mean, it's a respect thing. I mean, you, you have to um, ag- not agree with somebody, but you have to at least respect and accept who they are. And, um, I mean, we're getting a lot of that. I mean, there, there's many people on social media that, um, you know, they're friends one day with you and then the next day they might not be. So, I mean, depending on what views you have. And it's always one-sided. I mean, you'll never see a conservative person not wanting to be friends with uh, a radical because um, of their, their, their ideas. Um, but it's always the other way around. So, I mean, you know, um, be true to who you are. Uh, stand up for your values, your principles, and um, make sure that you're you're not um, um, pressured into thinking otherwise. Because uh, I know that um, a lot of people are out there, and um, you know it's it, it, it's something that needs to change. I mean, um, I mean, just remember that you're the norm, and that they aren't. I mean, as as much as it might not be the case what the media want you to believe, but um, you're actually a majority, and. Um, you're part of normal thinking that's existed for thousands of years.